subject of the four square gospel the four square gospel let me pray and we'll get started heavenly father today lord thank you for loving us and paying our debt father our debt was over our head we could never get out all we could do was file bankruptcy and all we could do was just go to the debtor's prison but lord thank you that you came along one day and, Lord, you picked us up out of that prison house. And, Father, you set us free. And you paid the debt that we owed. Christ suffered the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. Thank you, Lord, for the atonement. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, the subject of the four square gospel. I am figuring that you've already figured out what I'm going to draw. Amen. <laughs> In the marriage ceremony, we talk about the uh, longevity of a of a marriage with the with the ring, because the ring is a circle, and so many times we have the idea that to represent eternity. And represent God's dealings, we talk about the circle of God's affairs and the circle of God's love. And that's fine, and I'm not trying to preach against that. But what I want to preach about this morning is at least three things that are square in God's dealing with people. Uh, that That is, of course, this is in my generation. You new fellas wouldn't know anything about it. But when we wanted to uh, say that somebody wasn't up to snuff, we'd call them square. Yeah. You remember that? They're just as square as they can be. And that was an insult, or we thought it was. It meant that they wasn't in the Elvis Presley generation, that they weren't uh, uh, able to rock and roll like we were. They were just plain old squares. <laughs> well, the truth of the matter is, God uses, well, there's several squares in the Bible, but the one that I want to start with tonight or to that this morning is the, if you're going to go to God, the first thing you've got to do is go through the square. By that I'm saying that when they came and built the tabernacle in the wilderness, that was the place where man and God met. It was designed for that. And the very first thing that you met when you went in the door of the tabernacle was a square altar. It was an altar that was given dimensions that one was as wide as it was long. But it was the median point where the sacrifice was brought from the ground and lifted up and put on the altar before God. And if you ever were going to get in touch with God, you needed to come through that square altar. You needed to come through the blood. In John chapter 12 and verse 32, the Bible said, speaking of Jesus, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And so they would lift that sacrifice up and they would place it on that burning altar and they would pour the blood out at the base of the altar and allow that lamb or bull or whatever they were sacrificing, if they would allow it to suffer, die, and be totally consumed to erase the guilt of the sinner. Amen. Are you listening to me this morning? Have, has anybody ever told you that you're a sinner in the sight of God? Amen. American society does not want to... Use that word today. We think everything's just fine. But the truth of the matter is that we were born in sin. We were shaping in iniquity. And if we're ever going to get to God, we've got to come through that square. Oh. <clears throat> Let me say that the same thing that gained acceptance is the same thing that barred you from entering the tabernacle. If you did not come through the blood, you did not get in. We do not ad admire the sacrifice 
I do not uh, appreciate Calvary in the, in the essence of, of uh, that I'm glad that Jesus had to do that. But apply. It's done. He loved you. He died for you. He said, I don't want him to. He's already done it. So then what we need to do is just apply it. It was designed by God, but it was built by man. I think about in Acts chapter 2 and verse 23, the Bible said that ye with your wicked hands. It was your hands that did it. But it was God's design that he would die on that cross that he could pay the debt. Hallelujah. I don't know what that does to you. That makes your preacher feel good. When he realizes that my sins are gone away and that I do not have to give account for them. They were paid for, paid in full by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. That ought to cause us to shout this morning. Sin demanded death. Death is where salvation was established. Four square equals a, a horizontal, equal a, a horn on each side of the altar. Uh, each side and the horns of the Bible, of course, represent power. And whenever I think about, is there any power? Is there any power? In the sacrifice of Christ. You know what the Apostle Paul told the Romans? In chapter 1 and verse 16, Paul told the Romans, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that will believe it. The power to save us is in that altar that Jesus Christ established at Calvary. Two staves were placed through that altar so that we might be able to carry it. And I want to say that Christ's death was not enough. Amen. 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 You know what also necessary? His resurrection. Amen. Amen. Christ died for our sins. Uh Preacher, are you trying to tell me? Yes. I believe that Jesus arose from the dead. And I believe he's alive this morning. And I believe he knows the very hairs of your head. And the thoughts and the intents of your heart. God knows them. Jesus is alive and knows all about them. We're not saved by his life and death. We're saved by his death and life. Everybody looks about, you know, the life of Jesus Christ. And it was admirable. And if you were going to find an example, it would be the greatest example that, that ever was. Amen. But all of his examples didn't save you. Amen. All of his good life didn't save Amen. you. Amen. He went around, he healed the people that he came in contact with. All of those healings didn't save. Amen. It took his death on the cross. Amen. And then it took that third day resurrection. And now I can say, hallelujah, thank God I'm saved. I'm saved by the blood of the Lamb. That there's uh, uh, number one, I haven't even got to the drawing board. The second thing I want to talk about, and there's several of them through the Bible, but the second thing I want to talk about in God's dealing that is four square is the city that I'm going to one of these days. The New Jerusalem is full full square. The gospel writer gives it, calls it a country. That means, that that is a description of the vastness of the area, that city. It's called a country. It's called a city. That's descriptive of its inhabitation. It's called a kingdom. That's in the orderliness of the way that place is run. It's called a paradise because the eternal bliss that you and I that are saved will have there. It's called a father's house because of the relationship of the family. Peter tells us that this old world that we're living in is going to go up in flames one of these days. But thank God that city will stand forever. Amen. Amen. 
We built all our hopes and all our dreams down here. Let me help you. I, I was the same way whenever I was a young man. I thought all of the things were going to be nailed here. But I'm telling you, as time passes, I realize uh, uh, that my stakes are not driven so tight down here anymore. I got a home in the glory land that will outshine the sun. Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where moth and rust doth not corrupt and where thieves do not break through to steal. I believe the new Jerusalem will be the focal point of the entire new heaven and new earth. Jesus' radiance will light up that city just like Jacob saw that ladder given an excess from earth to heaven. I believe the passage through eternity will be coming in and out of that city, the new Jerusalem. The old Jerusalem should have been. The old Jerusalem was called the city of peace. Do you know what it winds up in the Bible? It's called Sodom and Egypt. Yeah, amen. It turns into wickedness. Yeah. Amen. amen. Wickedness that would kill its own king. Yeah. Wickedness would, would murder the Son of God. But thank the Lord. That will not happen in the New Jerusalem. Amen. amen. Sin will not enter that city. Amen. Those, uh, uh, those uh, uh, that have left here to go to that land are covered by the blood of Jesus yeah. Christ and won't have to worry about rebellion. Amen. That now, those are two major things uh, that I see as poor square. Uh, uh, there are others. But I want to relate to John chapter 3 and verse 16. And I want to relate about the love of God. And I want to show you how the love of God operates, if I can do that. Look in John chapter 3 and look at verse 35. John chapter 3, verse 35. The Father loveth the Son. You see that? Yes, now, what I'm going to try to do here, if I can get this acquainted to you, let's say this is heaven. And in heaven, before the foundation of the world, the Father... Loved the Son. Yeah. Do you see that? Amen. Before you and I were ever thought of. Yeah. Before Adam was ever created. Yeah. Before the earth ever came about. Yeah. The Father loved the Son. Amen. You know, I often wonder, when I read my Bible and I see things in there that are just, just why would you put that in the Bible? Yeah. Have you ever thought about that? That, take, for instance, the book of 1 Chronicles. Whenever you open that up, you got about 10 chapters there of people amen, uh, who, who knows about yeah. Who cares yeah. about them? Yeah. 10 chapters worth of names of people. Yeah. What, a, what a blessing, man, to read all those names. And I asked God, I said, well, why did you put such boring stuff in the Bible? <laughs> now, I know y'all too, too spiritual to get bored with it. But it bores me when I start in Matthew chapter 1 and I read about Abraham begetting Isaac and Isaac begetting Jacob. And by the time I got through them 14 generations, man, I'm needing me some television to lighten things up around here. So I said, why are those things in the Bible? And then I got this realization. Every one of those people are somehow connected to God's Son. And if you're connected to God's Son, God thinks you're important. And He don't give a rip whether I think it's important. Amen. I mean, I like Molly's friends. You may not care nothing about them. I probably wouldn't care nothing about them if they weren't Molly's friends. But because they're Molly's friends, they're important to me. Amen. Now, the love of God is towards His Son. That's primary. He don't even need earth. Amen. Heaven before the foundation of the world. To the man 
Uh, Jesus never ha- had a, uh, he never had a question about the Father's love. Amen. He did have a question about the Father's method. You remember whenever he came to the am I preaching too hard or are y'all listening to, too quick? Whenever he came to the to the cross and he cried out from that cross, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He never questioned that God loved him. He simply questioned sometimes about the methods that God uses. Don't you look so sanctimonious to me? Amen. Amen. Haven't you ever questioned the method that Amen. God used in your life? Yeah. You wonder why it happened. Have you ever felt abandoned by God? Have you ever felt that God didn't listen to you? Well, I want you to know because He loves the Son, He'll listen to you. Amen. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5 says, He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. The Father's love uh, uh, is shown all through the, the gospel story. Whenever He came to be baptized, uh, amen, He chose amen. a Baptist preacher, not a Roman Catholic priest. Amen. amen. And whenever he walked that 60 miles to be baptized, and he came down there to the Jordan River, uh, and when John saw him uh, and told about the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, but he didn't need John's announcement because the Father came from heaven, said, This is my beloved Son. The Father loves the Son. The Father does not turn a, a wheel that the Son doesn't know about it. According to John chapter 5, verse 20, seven times in John he acknowledges that the Father loves him. He knows that. He knows that. He's known that from eternity. Now let me let me go another step further. I keep looking from a chalk. It's over here. Because, because the Father loves the Son. Amen. He loves the Christian. That loves the Son. Amen. 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 The Father <laughs> loves the... Look, look here, if you will, if I can get this. Uh, uh, John chapter 17, verse 23. John 17, I in them and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved them as thou hast loved me. Amen. Beca- Amen. Yeah. Do you see that the love he has for the Son, uh, 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 enduring through all heaven, is transferred to earth down here yeah. because we love the Son he loves us because I'm in Him and He's in me. The Father loves me, not because I'm worth loving, but because I'm in Christ. And if I'm in Christ, I'm accepted in the Beloved. Father loves the Christian with the same love. The Father loves us in our sins. Do you know that? We don't, we don't have to get saved for Him to love us. If He didn't love us, He would have not sent the Son to be our Savior. God commendeth His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. What manner of love the Father hath bestowed on us that we should be called the sons of God. Are you looking? Amen. You're looking at a full-fledged Son of the living God today because the Father has bestowed that amount of love on me. The love that He had for His Son up in heaven is the love He shed abroad in my heart. One outstanding reason that He loves me is because I loved and accepted Jesus. And God wants to glorify Jesus. Now, we can only feel our love by our obedience. I mean, you know, if you're disobedient, God's not going to manifest His love to you. 
But he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. Amen. We'll come to him. We'll make ourselves known to him. Amen. If we'll obey him. Amen. John 14, 21. Now, the Father loves Jesus. And the Father loves the Christian that loves Jesus. Now give me another little line coming down here towards earth. The Son loves me. Amen? Amen. Not only does God the Father love me, but God the Son loves me. John 15, 9. Look at this. John chapter 15, verse 9. As the Father hath loved me, so have I loved you. Amen. Remember that love we were talking about, how the Father loves the Son? Yeah. With that same amount of love that goes on from eternal ages past, the Son loves us. Jesus loves us. Uh, he loved us enough to leave heaven's glory. He loved us enough to come down to this wicked, sin-cursed world. And He loved us enough to lay down His life on the cross amen. that you and I, sinners, amen, dope heads, drunkards, harlots, yeah. liars, cheats, thieves, yeah. sinners could be saved yeah. because He loved us that much faith in His Son and gave Himself for our sins. Jesus' love cannot be separated. Amen. Amen. In Romans chapter 8, He said death couldn't do it and life couldn't do it and angels and principalities and Amen. powers and things present and things to come, height nor depth nor any other creature is able to separate Amen. us. From the love of God which is in Christ Jesus his son. So it looks pretty good. Now here's where we're going to. The fenders go rub the wheel. <laughs> to finish the square. I know it's not a square. I don't even claim to be an artist. <laughs> but to finish the square. This goes on in heaven. What goes on on earth? Amen. That you love one another. Yeah. Amen. 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 By this shall all men know that you're my disciples. Amen. If you love one another. John Amen. 15, 9. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. The bottom line of earth, John 13, 34, is that we love each other. Yeah. Amen. Now, I wonder. I've been around these Baptist churches a long time. I've said it this way. My mama carried me in a Baptist church nine months before I was born. I've been around here a long time, yeah. close to, close to uh, 64 years. Over and over and over, we are told to love one another. The, the scholars tell us that's repeated more than all three of the others. Yeah. We are told, and the purpose behind us loving one another yeah. is that men might know that you're my disciples. Amen. No wonder the devil wants church splits. No wonder the devil wants people fussing and fighting and quarreling and sitting there, amen, like a touch-me-not. You dare say the wrong thing, and I'll get mad and I will. Amen. 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 That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, the oil that keeps the friction out of the church is loving each other. Amen. 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 Do you love you, brother? If you, don't lo if you love your brother, then what you need to do when you come to the altar and see that you have a problem with your brother, leave your gift at the altar and go be reconciled to your brother and then, amen, amen. pull your little feet back amen. under the seat. Amen. 
You should have wore hard toes when you come in here. It can only happen. The only way we can love each other. What was that? 13 threes? Is that, is that, is that close? 34. 13, 3, and 4. Okay, watch this. The only way that we can love each other is for to be connected. Amen. 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 If we get loose from here. Right? Yeah. It, amen. 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 But, but if we will work at staying in fellowship with God, yeah. there is something about being in fellowship with God that you won't. You, hey, I heard this old fellow talking about he got saved and said when he got saved, he said the, the birds just started singing in his soul. He went to church, he thought everybody was his friend. Yeah. <laughs> you ever been there? He, the birds were just singing. He thought everybody loved everybody else because he just got saved. Amen. Said directly, said somebody come up to him, said, did you hear the way that guy testified over there? <laughs> said, he don't do nothing but aggravate to serve because that's all he does. On, and he said, I agreed with him. The guy wasn't nothing but aggravation. And he said, we got together. We decided we weren't going to like his testimony. He said, I really heard him. But you know what? The birds quit singing. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And I got all mean inside. Amen. And I got all bitter. Amen. And then a preacher came and preached about that man that had a debt he couldn't pay. Amen. And he said, this man come along and paid it. And said, then he went to his brother that had a little old meager debt. And he would Amen. Am I telling yeah, God? Amen. 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 The four square gospel is simply this that God loves the Son. God loves anybody that loves the Son. The Son loves us. And if the Son loves us, then we need to love one another. Amen. It only happens as those two lines descend from heaven and connect us on earth. The result will be that God will be glorified. The world will know and believe that we are the real church of God Amen. if we love one another. Let's bow for prayer. Heads are bowed today and eyes are closed. If you do not love your brother whom you have seen, how can you say you love God?